Welcome back, this is Professor Gallagher, and this is video four of five of our Swift midterm solution where you built an iOS app we called Ollivander's Wand. So let's code on, you wizards of Swift. So now it's time for part F. It is all about creating the new view controller to hold the spell descriptions. So let's go ahead and create a new view controller on the main storyboard, and we'll also add that show segue, and we'll make sure that its identifier is set to show detail. So back in Xcode, I'm going to hide the debug area, get back over to main storyboard, click on the library, search for view controller, drag it over just to the right of our existing view controller, then let's click on the cell. You might want to do that in the document outline to make sure that you're getting the cell and not the title or the content view. Control drag over from cell to the new view controller, let go, select show segue, then select the little ball on the segue line, then in the attributes inspector we see the attributes for the segue, and we'll set the identifier to show detail. Now let's create the interface for our new view controller. It should look like this diagram on the right. The fonts are all Avenir condensed 24 point. The static labels are bold. The color is set to eggplant and you can find eggplant in the colored pencil or crayon box. So back in main storyboard, let's go into the library, find a label, drag it over right onto our new view controller. Let go in the attributes inspector. Let's click on font. We'll set the font to custom and the font family to Avenir next condensed, the size to 24 points then click done. I'll double click inside the label and change the text inside here to read spell data colon. Then I'll command D to duplicate this once, position it just below it. Then I'm going to highlight both of those labels, command D again to duplicate both of them. Now I've got four labels. I'll position the two below the other two. I'm going to drag the right side of what will be my spell name value and my spell description value to the right margin in the view controller. Then I'll change the default that's going to show the spell name to name here. And for the one that's going to show the spell description, I'll change that to description here. Then I'm going to click this top one that says spell name. And I'm going to command click on the second one so I highlight both of them. Then I can go up under font and set the style to bold. It changes both of the selections together. Then I can go under text color and I can scroll all the way down here to custom then click on the color pencil area on the right hand side if that's not already clicked and if you hunt around over here near all of these purple colored pencils you'll see one that says eggplant right up top that's the one that you want just click on that looks nice and purpley that's a magical color then we want to create a new swift view controller spell detail view controller dot swift that can do everything necessary so that this file can be used to write code for our new view controller so i want to create this file right underneath my view controller dot swift file so i'm going to right click on view controller dot swift select new file this is going to be a coco touch class click next make sure that you've selected ui view controller as the class that you're subclassing name the class spell detail view controller click next click create, and then just get rid of all the unneeded comments. Now back on main storyboard, we want to select our new view controller, go up to the identity inspector, and under class, select the file that we just created, spell detail view controller, press return, and we can see if we move our cursor right on top of the yellow ball, it indeed says spell detail view controller. So this view controller on our main storyboard now has the identity of the file we just created. Next up in spell detail view controller, add a value of type spell data named spell data. We head over to spell detail view controller dot swift and right underneath the class definition we'll say var spell data lower camel case colon spell data upper camel case exclamation point. Next for 16, let's create an IB outlets to hold the spell name and the spell description. They should be called name label and description label. Then we want to constrain the labels to constrain the spell name and the description so that they'll shrink or expand based on the width of the iOS device. Also make sure that the description label can resize to offer multi-line descriptions. So let's get into the side-by-side -side assistant editor. We'll click on spell detail view controller, then option click on main storyboard. Then I'll control drag from this label it says name here. I'll let go just under the class definition. I'll call this name label, click connect. I'll do the same with description here and I'll call that description label. Now we'll get back into the standard editor mode and get on the main storyboard and we'll do our constraints. So my first label here I'll constrain to the upper left hand corner. Click add to constraints. Click my name label add constraints for that, and I'll constrain top, left, and right. Notice that the left and right are at 16 points. That's good. Add three constraints. The static label, it says spell name. It should say spell description. I got to change that, but it'll be in the top and left-hand corner. I'll add two constraints. Then for description label down below, I'll click on top, left, and right. 16 points at each of the two left and right margins. Add three constraints. And to make sure that we can see multiple lines for this description label, let's go over to its attributes inspector and we're going to set the lines to zero. If you want to build and run to test this out, this is looking pretty good as we go back and forth. 
and we can stop, head back to main storyboard, click on view as just to see how things look on an iPhone SE or on a Mac sized iPhone and the resizing and constraints are all looking wonderful. Next is question number 17. This is where you pass data between view controllers. So you wanna write code so that when a table view cell is clicked, the spell data in the tapped spell is passed to the spell detail view controller and the appropriate properties are shown in name label and description label. And the image at the right shows what happens if you click on Aloha Mora. We can see that the name of the spell is there, the description is there, the description label will extend for as many lines as are needed in order to be able to show that description. Also get rid of the lingering gray in the selection by setting the table view cell selection attribute to none. So remember how we pass data over from the view controller, we need to put a prepare for segue in the view controller. So we'll do that just before the last curly in the main class, but before the extension, say prepare for segue, select this with a return. Then inside we'll say if segue.identifier equals, and inside of the empty string, we'll say show detail is the identifier. And you can always go over to the main storyboard and double check to make sure that you've got your string in there. I usually go over here just to be triple sure because Xcode doesn't give you a good error if you get this wrong. So I'm gonna highlight what's inside the identifier here, command C, and go back into my view controller and command V to paste it in. And I had this right, this double check is just me being paranoid. I'm putting in a comment in here that says, technically we don't need an if since we only have one segue. And that also means that we don't need an else clause here either. We use the else clause only if we're gonna be adding a record and we're not adding a record here. Now inside that if statement, we wanna get the destination. So we'll say let destination equals segue dot destination. We need to downcast it. So we'll say as exclamation point and then spell detail view controller. That gives us access to all of the properties inside of spell detail view controller. Then we wanna figure out which cell was tapped so we'll say let selected index path equals table view dot index path for selected row and we'll force unwrap that and it's totally okay to do this because it'll never be nil because show detail is only attached to a table view cell so the show detail segue will only fire when a table view cell is tapped finally this is where we pass over our data we say destination dot spell data and notice code completion knows that there's a spell data inside of our destination that's why we needed a downcast with the as exclamation point spell detail view controller we'll say equals spells dot spell array open bracket selected index path dot row close bracket then let's head over to spell detail view controller and we'll set up our interface. So I'm gonna create a function actually for updating the interface. So I'll call that func update user interface and I'll pass in no parameters. So I'll say open and close parens, open and close curlies and make sure that I call that right from within view did load. And you know, I don't have to do this next step in here but it's a good idea just in case there were a problem in passing over data. Uh, I'm gonna say if spell data equals equals nil to check to make sure that I've got something in spell data. If I don't have anything in spell data then I'm just gonna say spell data equals and then upper camel case spell data open parens this will give me the constructor for our struct and I'll just pass in empty strings for these three Again, the reason for that is to make sure that I never get a nil in spell data before I update my user interface otherwise if I try to read stuff inside of spell data and I've got nils in there my code would crash now this should never happen because we should always be passing over data but again building in this kind of error protection that's the mark of a good programmer and so now when update user interface, we update the user interface, we'll say name label dot text equals spell data dot name and description label dot text equals spell data dot description. Then build and run, no errors, hammer time. Let's see how things are working. Let's click on Alohomora. Whoo, the unlocking charm. We get the description, nice. How about Accio Lock It? That's gonna bring the lock it to you. Pretty good. Oh, and let's scroll down here. How about a little Expecto Patronum? In case those Dementors are chasing after you, you'll get some information about the Patronus charm. Nice work, Swifter. On to the next question. Ah, uh, yeah, we want to get rid of the lingering gray table view selection by setting the table view cell selection attribute to none. Super easy to do. So let's head back to main storyboard. Make sure that you click on the cell. Then we'll go up into the attributes inspector. We'll select selection and change that to none. And I'll do a quick build and run just to verify that this is working and clicking on Accio Locket. We don't see the selection in there, but the segue is working fine. Aloha Mora, no problem at all. Excellent. Up next, we want to get the swipe up gesture to cast a spell. So in one of our exercises, remember our help Elon Musk, we added a swipe gesture to an image, but you can also easily add a swipe gesture to the entire view controller by dragging the gesture into the big rectangle that represents the view controller's main view. Add a swipe gesture to spell detail view controller, set it up to respond to a swipe up. That's an important piece because by default it does a swipe right. 
and then create an IB action for this gesture and name the IB action view swiped. Back in the main storyboard, open the library, search for swipe. We see a swipe gesture recognizer, drag that bad boy over and plop it right into the center of our spell detail view controller. That creates the gesture. Now the tricky thing with gestures is they don't show up on the body of the view controller, but you see it at the bottom of our list of items in our document outline for the spell detail view controller. There's also a little symbol up here for the swipe gesture in the dock of the spell detail view controller. But we want to head up here in the swipe gestures attributes inspector and change the swipe from right to up. Now we need to create an IB action for that swipe gesture. So we're going to click on spell detail view controller, then option click on main storyboard. We're in the assistant editor. I'm going to click on Spell Detail View Controller so I can see the contents in the document outline. Then I'm going to control drag from my Swipe Gesture Recognizer to the bottom just before the curly that ends Spell Detail View Controller. I'll drop that rubber band in here, create an IB action, and I'll call this View Swiped. I'll also make sure that I set the type to UI Swipe Gesture Recognizer and click Connect. Now let's move on to exam part I, which is all about sound play. So what you're going to do is download the sounds from the Google Drive at the URL below and then copy them in your assets catalog. Then do everything you need to do in order to play the sound stored in the spell sound file property. You'll notice that those names match up exactly with those files that you just copied into your assets catalog. And the sound should play if you swipe up only at a cast spell button if you can't get the swipe up to work. So if you paste in that URL, you come up to this Google Drive, I'll command click to select these two folders, then I'll right click to download. Google Drive will take some time to zip these up, then your browser will probably ask you where you want to save these. I'm going to save mine to the desktop. You can also change the name of the file in here as well. I'll just call mine files for wand app. It's just a little bit clearer than the mix of characters that Google would put in there. Just in case your browser does not ask you where to save it, it's probably saving it into your downloads folder. So since I saved my zip file into the finder, I'm going to find that, double click on it. We can see that it created a folder. I'm going to go inside this folder, press command A to select both of these folders, the app icon set and the spell sounds, then head back over to Xcode, get into my assets catalog. Remember that's assets.xc assets over here in the project navigator. I'm going to delete the app icon that I've got here, and then when I drag over my new app icon as well as the spell folder, I'm going to have all of my sounds and this cool new wand icon too. Then we'll head back over to spell detail view controller.swift, and to set things up for playing sound, first we're going to import AV Foundation, then we're going to create a variable for an audio player, we'll call that var audio player, and we're going to declare it but not initialize it, so we'll say colon AV audio player, and implicitly unwrap that with an exclamation point. Then we used our play sound function in lots of different apps here, so we'll create this just like we have our other play sound functions. We'll say func play sound, we'll pass in one value in between the parentheses, we'll say name, and that'll be a string, colon string, open and close curlies. And the first thing we're going to do in play sound is we check to see if we can get a valid NS data asset from the name that we're passing in. That means can we get some data from a file with the same name as this string? So we'll say if let sound equals NS data asset, open parens, we see the name value and that name is going to be name which is the string we're passing in which should be a file name then we'll open and close curlies we'll have an else condition with another open and close curlies and if we hit the else condition that means that we got a nil when we tried to read in from this ns data asset just say print error colon could not read data from file named string interp name and just for effect we'll start the string with angry emoji up next we're going to read this value in as a sound file we need to do that within a do catch clause and the reason for that is in order to turn this data into a sound file we're going to use a function of av sound player that could potentially throw an error if you see a throw we need to try and if we use a try one thing that we can do is we can use a do catch clause trial go in the do it's in between the curlies that follow do and catch happens if an error is thrown so I'm just going to copy the error that I had down here paste it in between the throw handling curlies that follow catch and for this I'll change the printout so that it says error data in string interp name could not be played as a sound then remember we declared but we didn't initialize this variable audio player so we're going to say audio player equals then we say try av audio player open parens and the reason why we need to say try is we want this option down here with data where we're going to pass in data to try to create some audio that it can play but that can potentially throw an error so we need the try and we need to put this in between do catch so select this option 
press return. And it's a little tricky because because you'd think that the NS data asset gives you data, but to get the data, we actually have to go to the data property of an NS data asset. We say sound.data. Now, if this works, we haven't thrown an error, so we have a file inside of audio player, the line right below our try, we can say audio player dot play, open and close parens, and that's it. Now we just got a call play sound. We'll do that right inside of view swipe. So if you swipe up, we'll play a sound. We'll say play sound. And the value that we're going to pass in for name is spell data dot sound file. That comes to us from the API. And the API already knows what the name should be of those files that we're going to play locally. Let's build and run and make a little magic. We try a little Aloha Mora, click on that, then click and swipe up from down below. Oh, oh, nice spellcasting Hermione. And it's Quidditch time. How about we get that broom? Good work. Let's jazz this up a little bit more in the next question. We're on to part J. This is all about animation. It'd be cool if we flashed red during a spell cast to make it look like we're blasting something out of our phone slash wand. And the way that we're going to do this is we're going to animate the main view to a background color of red over a short period, like one tenth of a second, and then we'll immediately switch back to white after the animation. And we can do it using the steps below. So after we begin playing the sound and the swipe up, we're going to add some animation code. The end state for the animation should be to set the background color property of the view controller's main view to self.view to the color red, and the animation should take a duration of one tenth of a second to arrive at that end state. Now, after the animation has flashed, you need to reset the background color back to white so that the view controller doesn't stay red, and we'll do this in the completion handler that runs after the animation is done. Remember how we shut that off with the Elon Musk rockets if you went through that exercise? Same thing. We're also going to use a completion handler here. No animation is needed in the completion handler. We just want to set the background color to white. Then to add a little bit more flair, we're going to add a delay parameter to the animate method. A delay of one second will delay the flash so that the flash seems to be coming partway through the enunciation of the spell. So we'll perform this animation in spell detail view controller inside of our view swiped after we do our play sound. And the way we start our animation is we say UI view dot animate. Then we get a bunch of different options and we want one with a duration, a delay and a completion handler. So I'm going to select this option right here, press return. This also gives me some options, but I can just delete that part. So I want the duration of the animation to be 0 0.1 or 1 10th of a second. I want the delay to not start start this animation until after 1.0 or 1 second. Now let's delete these options. We could just put in an empty array in here. The options actually go in as a form of an array, but we're going to delete this because we haven't learned anything about the options yet in our course. Make sure right after the 1.0 we have comma, and then after animations colon, what we're going to do is we're going to say open and close curlies, because what we pass in here could be a line or several lines. This is a closure. It's a little block of code that we pass in as a single parameter in the UI animate function. And what this is going to be is the end state of our animation. Now this end state that we're transitioning to over our time duration is going to be self.view.backgroundcolor equals, and we'll say dot red. This means we're going to take one tenth of a second to turn the background color from its current color to red. Then for the completion handler, what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on this area that's highlighted in blue. See Xcode formats things nicely for us. For the bool, we're not going to use that value, so we could call it anything. I'm just going to say done, although I suppose we could put an underscore in there since we're not using it. And then after the in, the reason why this is called the completion handler is after we're done with the animation, then we execute whatever's after the in. And that'll just be self.view.backgroundcolor equals dot white. So we will immediately turn it to white. We'll take one tenth of a second to turn red and then immediately back to white. That'll make it look like a flash. Let's build and run and see. I'm feeling a little parched. Why don't we select Aguamente, swipe up. Aguamente. Oh, the flash really adds a spark to the app. Let's swipe out a little Confundus. <laughs> Fantastic. Let's do some more animation. So starting at question 23, it'd also be magical if your IB outlets were off screen and then they flew in from the right when we moved into spell detail view controller. And I've got a few hints in terms of how you can pull this off. First, we want to create two variables, one called name X and one called description X. What those will do is those will hold the X value. That means the leftmost side of our two labels to show where we should end up when we're done animating. Because what we're going to do is after we save those two values, we're going to move the name label and the description label off the right hand side of the iOS device. So we're going to find out what the width of the device is and then we're going to set the leftmost portion of the name label and the description label so that it's just off the right hand side. 
then what we're going to do is we're going to animate the labels. For the name label, we're going to take 0.5 seconds to end up at name X, which was our original spot. And for an extra special effect, what we're going to do is we're going to animate the description label waiting 0.25 seconds. So it starts after the name label, but then it catches up because it animates only over a quarter of a second as opposed to half of a second. So that'll seem like it whisks in right behind it trying to catch up. Very wizardly. So we'll start by declaring values name x and description x to hold the ending value of the x coordinate of our name label and our description label. And now when we declare these, we're not going to initialize them, but make sure that you declare them as a CG float. That's the tricky part, but we've already seen these when we've worked on animations in previous apps. So CG floats, they look like doubles. They're not really doubles though. CG stands for core graphics. It's an Apple animation framework. So we'll say var name x colon CG float force unwrap with an exclamation point, var description x colon cg float force unwrap as well. Then let's initialize these values in view did load. So just before we call update user interface, we'll say name x equals name label dot frame dot origin dot x. Again, that gets the leftmost position of the label. And then we'll say description x equals description label dot frame dot origin dot x. Then we're going to move the x value of name label off the rightmost edge of our view controller. So we'll say name label dot frame dot origin dot x equals and self dot view dot frame dot width gets us the width of the device. So now we can't see our label anymore. We'll do the same with our description label. We'll say description label dot frame dot origin dot x equals self dot view dot frame dot width. Just to remind you what we did with these two lines in here, I'll put in a comment that says save original location so that we can animate back to this spot. Only the X value will change since we're moving horizontally. And above these two lines, we'll say move the upper left point of the two labels so that it's just off screen to the right of the view controller. And now that we move the labels off screen, we're going to do the actual animation in update user interface. So just at the end of update user interface, we'll say UI view dot animate. And I'm going to select the option with duration and the animations. The duration is going to be 0.5 and inside the animations and remember the animations property takes a closure so that means curly braces and we put the end state in here where our object will end up after a 0.5 second transition because we put 0.5 seconds in as the width duration value. We're going to take name label dot frame dot origin dot x and we're going to set that equal to name x that was the leftmost position of the name label before we moved it off screen. Now, because we're inside of a closure here, Xcode is going to want us to put selfs in front of both of these properties of the class. And so now that I've animated my name label, I'm going to copy this line for the name label animation. I'm going to paste it down below. And this is where I want to animate my description label. And remember what we want to do here. We want the duration to be 0.25, but we also want to have a delay. That's going to be 0.25 as well. So we don't have to select it from code completion. We can just say comma delay colon 0.25 comma. You got to make sure that the parameter name that you're typing in here is exactly as the function expects, but it is. Then I'll swap out name label for description label and name X for description X. Then let's build and run. Oh, my glasses are broken. I could use an Oculus Repair. Oh, look at that animation sliding over from the right. Oculus Repair Room. Swipe up, makes your iPhone seem as if it's right from Ollivander's workshop. How about we get rid of a boggart with this ridiculous, nice animation. Ridiculous! A little snappy cast there. Outstanding. Next up, let's get shaken. We're going to create a function called cast spell. It contains all the, co the code from view swiped. We're going to move all the code from view swiped into cast spell, and we're going to call cast spell from view swipe. And it would be cool if you could wave your phone like a wand instead of just swiping up. Well, the accelerometer in your iOS device can tell if it has been shaken. And if so, we can detect that shake and execute code. Now, even though you've never done this before, learning how to do something new in iOS once given key information is an important app development skill. All you need to do is use the function motion end you can find out all about it in code completion, add it at the same level as the other functions in your code. All you need to do is call cast spell from within motion ended. Then you can shake your phone in the simulator by pulling down the device menu and selecting shake. A shortcut is control command Z. Now above view swipe, let's create a function cast spells with a func cast spells. Open and close parens, nothing inside because we have no parameters to pass in. Open and close curlies. Then let's highlight the code inside of view swiped cut it out, paste it into cast spells, then call cast spells from view swiped, 
And now right above view swipe, let's add that new motion ended function. And as soon as I type in motion ended, I see it show up in code completion. The description says, tells the receiver that a motion event has ended. Cool, we'll use that to detect a wave of the wand. And now let's just call cast spells inside of motion ended. Let's build and run. No errors, hammer time. It's a nice day here in Boston, so I want to open a window. I'll use the Aloha Mora in the simulator's device menu. Select Shake. Aloha Mora. Utterly magical. Now, how about we call up a Patronus? You can also use Control Command Z as it's shown right here in the menu. That'll also execute a shake. Expecto Patronus! Aha, and there you go. Methinks your Patronus is a Swift. Let's finish up this app. So to finish up here, we want to add the large title navigation title and the navigation item of the view controller for the app. We want it to say Ollivander's Wand. That's the name of our app. We want to set that to Eggplant. What happens with the large navigation title is when you scroll up, they animate to a smaller navigation title. You'll need to set that to Eggplant as well. We want to make sure that we don't have the large navigation title over in the detail view controller, but we want the back button to be Eggplant too. Let's finish this up. So over on the main storyboard, select the navigation controller, select its navigation bar, and in the attributes inspector, select prefers large titles. Now over in the view controller, click on the navigation item in the view controller. That's the one that holds the table view. And in back button, just put in the word back. And I know this is weird because we have to put this in the view controller's nav item, even though back is gonna show up on the spell detail view controller, but that's what we gotta do. Now let's set things to eggplant. So we'll go back to the original navigation controller in the navigation bar for the navigation controller. I've clicked on that. I'm gonna go down to large title attributes and in title color, I'm gonna select eggplant. It's first in my previously used color since that was the last color that I had used. Select that, purple achieved. Then to get the back button showing up in eggplant, it's normally a light blue tint, so what we do is we go down here just below the background color and select tint color and select eggplant here. Now normally you want a different and consistent color for anything that can be clicked on. It's good UI design. It sends a visual cue to the user, but since the only things in our app that can be clicked are the table view cells and the back button, those are pretty intuitive. Plus, I like purple. It reminds me of prints. Whoops, and I forgot to add the title, so let's click back on the navigation item in the view controller with the table view. And for title, let's add Ollivander's wand. Remember, Ollivander in Harry Potter is the wand shop owner. The wand chooses the wizard. Now let's take a look at our spell detail view controller. The navigation item here is large, but I don't think that looks very good. And the reason it's large is because the main navigation bar says that it prefers large titles, and this large title setting is to automatic, so it's inheriting it from the master setting. But we can override this. So let's select on this navigation item, and where it says large titles, let's select never. Now one more thing to change. Since the large navigation item becomes a standard size navigation item when we scroll, we also need to set the title text attributes text color to eggplant as well. Otherwise, we'll go from purple to black and then back to purple again. So we do this under the title color, under title text. Now that's above what we already set with large text. So notice we have eggplant for three settings in here, for title text attribute color, large text attribute color, and for the tint. And so now let's build and run. The title says Ollivander's wand. It's wizardly purple. Scroll, and we see the title shrink but remain eggplant colored. Scroll to the top, the large title comes back. Nice. My spirits are raised by your app building skills. Let's perform a levitation spell. Thank you, Hermione. This was it for the exam, but as I often do, I've added a bonus for those watching the exam review video. There's one more video with some code that you can copy and paste to get some really cool animation in the beginning. It'll have the individual spells waft up and then form a table view, and the theme music will play too. That'll be coming in our next video. Keep at it, Swifter.